sing Psalms 1914. taking up our cross. If you look at Luke chapter 9 and verses 23 and 24, if you will stand with me as we read Amen. in reverence yes. to God's Word. What verses? 23 and 24. Uh, verse 23 and 24. <laughs> Starting in verse 23, it says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Amen. Lord, we thank you tonight again for allowing us to be here. We just pray that your spirit would speak to our hearts through the preaching of your word, Lord, that you would fill my mouth uh, with the words you would have me to say, Lord, that uh, we might draw closer to you, and Lord, that we might uh, grow even more uh, into that perfect man, being one mind and one accord, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Lord, we pray that you would just continue to bless us, continue to grow us in your grace, and strengthen us in the power of your might. And we give you the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So three things that I want to talk about tonight about taking up the cross. Number one is count the cost. Amen. He says in verse 24, Who, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Amen. Uh, you know, Dad used to tell the story of when he was in college, I believe, if I get this wrong, you can correct me later. Uh, but a man came to speak to the class, and uh, he was a, a man that people looked highly uh, uh, up to. And uh, after the class, after he had spoken to the class and they were leaving, one of the young men said, I would give anything to know what you know. Uh, and that's what he said, well, that's what it takes. It takes everything. Mm -hmm. you got to give it all. Amen? Uh, it's not just given to, to some. It's given to those who will give their all to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, and that's about what taking up the cross is. Uh, counting the cost. It takes your all. You have to give your whole life to the Lord. 
Uh, if you lose your life for His sake, amen, you'll find it. Amen. Uh, that life is truly uh, in the uh, living uh, of the Gospel, in the living for Jesus Christ amen. in this life. So count the cost. What uh, it'll cost you uh, is uh, very uh, small compared to what you will gain. Amen? Uh, the blessings that uh, come from uh, giving your life to the Lord and for His will. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Scott, you want to turn that light on? 2 oh. Corinthians chapter 6. <laughs> Verses 3 through 10 it says, Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, yeah. as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Yeah. You say, well, that's a lot to take in. Uh, you know, and the best uh, uh, way to, to live for the Lord is just take it day by day. Amen? Uh, but the whole thing about taking up your cross, he says, take it up daily. Amen. You, you have to recommit every day. It's not just a commitment you make on Sunday that lasts the whole week through. No, it's a commitment you make every morning when you wake up uh, to take up your cross and follow Him. Uh, because what happened yesterday is in the past. Amen. That's why Paul says the things that are in behind me, he says, I count them as dumb that I may win Christ, that I press toward the mark for the high calling of God in my life. Yeah. And so uh, each day that we have, we have to recommit ourselves to the ministry that God has given to us. As he says, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God. Yeah. So every day that we wake up, we need to count the cost. Amen? Amen. Every day that we wake up, we need to say, Lord, use me uh, today for Your honor and Your glory. Open the doors of utterance that I can be able to preach Your Gospel. Open those doors of opportunity that I can share Your Gospel with someone today. And uh, we must commit ourselves to God every day. Wow. Uh, and when these things come along, amen, uh, as we commit ourselves day by day, guess what? It's going to be something uh, that is just uh, a part of us. We don't even have to think about it. It's like uh, going to church, right? Uh, when Sunday rolls around, I don't even have to think about it. I, I know where I'm going to be. Uh, same thing with Wednesday night. Uh, don't even have to think about it. I know where I'm going to be. And so it's the same way with committing ourselves to God. Uh, the more that we do it, the more that it becomes a part of our life and who we are. And uh, so that when stripes, when imprisonments, and they, you said, they might not ever come, and that's in the Lord's hands, amen? But again, they might come, especially if you're going to be in the ministry of, of Christ, Amen? Uh, it wasn't just too long ago that there were some preachers in Detroit or somewhere street preaching who got uh, put in jail for disturbing the peace or whatever. Uh, they wanted to come up to put them in jail. That's been a couple of years ago, I think. 
And so, you know what? If, if you're going to stand for Christ, if you're going to be a witness, it could lead to that. Uh, times are getting worse. Yeah. Uh, stripes, imprisonments, afflictions, necessities. Now, we have necessities all the time, don't we? That's probably the, one of the things uh, that we come up against uh, almost on a daily uh, uh, on a daily uh, basis. Thank you. And that is necessity. We all have things that we need uh, to live. Bills to pay, jobs to keep, uh, all the things that we have to do, uh, uh, and uh, people who depend upon us, responsibilities that we have. But in all the necessities that we have, amen, we need to give it to the Lord. Uh, and say, Lord, uh, my job is Yours. Lord, uh, uh, my, my house is Yours. Lord, my family is Yours. And whatever we are doing, uh, we need to turn it around to, to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Uh, and so, in, in tumults and labors and watchings and fasting, by pureness, by knowledge, on suffering, kindness, the Holy Ghost, by love and pain, everything, uh, that is in our life and that comes into our life, we need to see as an opportunity uh, to serve the Lord. Yeah. And that takes a daily commitment. Mm -hmm. So many times people uh, in the moment, they have some sort of an emotion in a service. And maybe it is, uh, maybe it is genuine. And they come down and they... Uh, pray or they, uh, 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 they're they moved where they're at and God speaks to their heart and they leave the church on a high, right? And uh, that high uh, seems uh, uh, genuine and seems real, but somewhere down the line it, it starts to fade and things begin to fall apart again. It's because you can't just uh, live your life on one moment uh, in church where God spoke to your heart. You have to do it moment by moment. Amen. You have to live for the Lord daily. Amen. Moment by moment. Yes. Uh, you know what? Temptation is going to come along. Things are going to come along. Brother TJ was talking about sometimes thoughts that uh, want to pop into your head. And it's taking those things as they come moment by moment and saying, Lord, forgive me. Lord, get this out of my head. Or Lord, whatever this is, help me with it. That God's going to be able to, overall, on the whole, be able to use us for His honor and glory. Right. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. One of the uh, most important things, and I think me and Brother Clifford was talking about this yesterday, I think. My, the way my mind works, it might have been a week ago, I don't know. But we were talking about consistency. Yesterday. <laughs> consistency is key. You can do the small things, or you can do a big, great thing, but all the big great things that you can do for the Lord won't amount to the consistency over a lifetime that you right. have serving the Lord. Yeah. And many people want and, and put more stock in doing one big great thing for the Lord than the consistency over time. But I'm going to tell you it's that consistency over time that will make more of an impact in other people's lives than one big great thing that you do for the Lord. Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 10 through 12 says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and I, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yeah. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Listen, uh, you, you might as well just mark it down. If you're going to live godly, if you're going to live for the Lord, you're going to suffer persecution. Uh, you know, Satan uh, is not happy uh, when people get serious about serving God. Yeah. 
uh, when people get serious about living uh, their faith. And that's what he says. You know my manner of doctrine. You know my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long-suffering, charity, patience. You know, people can see that in your life when you're consistent with it. People can see that when you're really serious about giving your life to the Lord every day. And it's going to make an impression on them. Uh, and that impression upon them, they might write it off. They might, uh, you know, laugh uh, about it. Or they might mock you about it. But somewhere down the line, uh, they're going to see the value of that. Because there's going to be something that happens in their life and they're going to say, you know what? I know of a consistent person. Mm -hmm. And that's old so-and-so, right? And I'm going to go talk to that person, right? Uh, and if it hasn't happened to you, uh, if you stay consistent in serving the Lord, it will happen to you. Amen? Yeah. Someone will come to you that maybe the last person you uh, uh, expect would come to you, might come to you and say, you know what, I'm really having a problem. I need you to pray for me or something like that, you know. And what a blessing that is to be able to be used of God. But all these things, we must endure hardness as good soldiers for Jesus Christ. Uh, if we're going to uh, strive for the mastery, if we're going to uh, give our lives uh, for the calling that has been uh, given to us, ministers of reconciliation, then we're going to have to endure these things and commit ourselves to God through it all so that He can receive the honor and glory. Yeah. Galatians chapter 5. I don't know how many times I've heard people tell me, Brother Scott, I didn't have any problems in my life until I gave my life to the Lord. And then it was like everything started happening to me. I'm telling you, I don't know how many times I've heard that. And I'm saying, well, that's the attack, say, man. <laughs> that's the tri tri uh, fiery trial, amen, of our faith. That when we truly give our lives to the Lord and we're serious about it, don't expect things just to be rosy and everything you know is going to turn around and and and, and, and uh, your luck is going to change or something. Because when you give your life to the Lord, uh, you're making enemies. <laughs> it's spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness and the rulers of the darkness of this world. And uh, so you can expect a fight when you are going to live for the Lord. Yeah. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 11, he says, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. <laughs> Amen. You're not going to suffer persecution by telling people what they want to hear are you? You're not going to suffer persecution by tickling everybody's ears. You're not going to suffer persecution uh, for even, uh, you know, sitting out on the sideline and, and not getting in, in, in the fight. Uh, you can be a spectator all you want to and you'll, you'll live fine. You'll have uh, an easy but I'm going to tell you what, if you start standing up and preaching the truth of God's Word, you're going to start suffering persecution. Yeah. If you're going to stand up and tell people the truth and the whole truth, <laughs> so help us God, of what the Word says, people are going to take offense to it. Yeah. And there are going to be people who start talking bad about you uh, and, and, and thinking bad about you. But that's okay, amen? Uh, because we're going uh, to please the Lord in our lives by doing so. Yeah. Uh, and as we read the Scripture this morning, if we suffer as Christians, amen, we can rejoice. Happy are ye when you suffer for Christ's sake. Yeah. Uh, so many times people avoid speaking the truth, but then the offense of the cross is ceased in their life. 
In other words, they've stopped bearing their cross for the Lord. Listen, it is, it is a cross to bear to be a truth teller. That is a cross that is heavy sometimes. Uh, because sometimes you know it's going to offend someone. And it might be someone close to you. But yet, you know what? The truth is the truth. And there's no change in the truth. And Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Yeah. And so we better hang our lives, our very existence, on the truth of the Word of God. Yeah. Secondly, not only about counting the cost, but remember whose cross it is that we're called to bear. Amen? It's the cross of Christ. It's His suffering that we're made partakers of. We're not alone. Amen? <laughs> he says, take my yoke upon you. It's His yoke. Amen? That we are to take upon us. It's His cross that we are called uh, to bear. And that is to follow Him wherever He leads us and, and uh, understanding what the will of the Lord is. And so, remember that. Remember that you're not alone. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. That we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10. <laughs> he says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Yeah. Amen. It is His cross. It is His Word. It is yeah. His truth. It is His Gospel. We are just called to carry it uh, in this life. Amen. Yeah. We are carry, uh, uh, called to hold and, and bear the truth that Christ has given to us. Do we seek to please men? Uh, you know, uh, we want to. Uh, maybe some more than others because some of us maybe we're just built that way that we want to please others. Uh, we, we don't want to offend anybody, but we want to, uh, you know, make everyone happy. Some of us are like that. But you know what? Uh, we're not here to please men. Man. We're here to please God Man. because it's His truth. Yeah. It's His Word. It's His Gospel. Amen. That we have been entrusted with. And it's His cross we have been called to bear. To take Amen. up that cross and make it our own. Amen. That we bear for the Lord. First Peter chapter 4. Peter chapter 4 and verses 14 through 16. We read this this morning. He says, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Yeah. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glory, uh, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Yeah. Listen, if we suffer, it is for Christ. Amen. If we suffer, let it be for Christ's sake, yeah. uh, because it is His ministry that yeah. we've been made a part of. Yeah. He says, "I beseech you, brethren." In Christ's stead, uh, be ye reconciled to God. And so we are here in His place yeah. as ambassadors for Christ. We're carrying His interests. Uh, we are living for His will and not our own. Yeah. And then Philippians chapter 1.
Philippians chapter 1, starting in verse 27. It says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake, having the same conflict which ye saw in me and now here to be in me. He says here, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ. Yeah. Amen? Is there not a cause? Yeah. As David said. Yes, the cause is for Christ. Amen? Yeah. It's in the behalf of Christ that we have been called to suffer for His sake. That we have been called to bear the cross for His sake. To preach the truth of the Word of God. Yeah. Uh, and to go without the camp bearing His reproach. Yeah. And then thirdly, we count the cost, we remember whose cross it is, amen, who's, uh, 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 on behalf of who that we are living for, that we're not alone. But you know what? There are so many blessings, amen. We sing the song, count your many blessings, name them one by one. It's really impossible, <laughs> amen. You start trying to count your blessing, and you're going to uh, run out of uh, 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 ways to express your gratitude unto the Lord, uh, because uh, He is way better to us than we are to Him. Yeah. Count the blessings. Second Corinthians chapter five. And I'll give this for an example. Uh, tithing. Before you really commit to tithing, in your mind you're thinking, how in the world would I be able to give what I, you know, give that and do without it? And I thought the same thing. How, how am I? How would? How am I supposed to give that uh, and and live on the rest? <laughs> And it, it seems like a big amount, you know, giving your tithe to the Lord. But once you start doing it, you get you get to see the blessings of God in your life. You don't even miss it. Yeah. I won't tell you what I give to the church because that's between me and the Lord. But I'll tell you this. <laughs> I've given more and more in my life and if you, if you would have told uh, of tw me 20 years ago what I'd be given today, I'd have said there's no way I'd have been given that much. And I don't even miss it. I don't even miss it. And it's that way with serving the Lord. I, you know, me and Brother Clifford were talking yesterday. He, there's not one t there will not be one time in your life you regret going to church. There will not be one time in your life you regret sharing the gospel with someone. There will never be a time you regret going on visitation or anything you do for the Lord. You'll never regret it. Yeah. Now, you might not want to do it. <laughs> Amen? But I'll tell you this much. When you make yourself do it and then you see the blessings that come from it, you'll be like, after it's done, you'll be like, I'm glad I did it. Man. I'm glad I went. I'm glad I spoke. I'm glad I shared the gospel with that person. Because you're going to see that you can't outgive God. Man. You just can't do it. You give Him your all. He's already given His all for you. Man. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15 says, for the love of Christ constraineth us. What constrains us? The love of Christ. <laughs> Amen? 
It's the love of Christ. I want to tell you what, when you see that love that He has for you in your life, it constrains you. Yeah. Why, why else would we do, we'd be doing anything else but serving the Lord? For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Amen. And that He died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him which died for them and rose again. Amen. And when you see what God has prepared for them that love Him, amen? amen. When you see what God has, uh, 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 what He provides in your life, the blessings that come from <coughs> serving Him, from totally being surrendered unto His will, you will say the same thing. Man, there is no other way. Yeah. There is no other way to live than for Christ. Yeah. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two and let's start. Mm. Let's start in verse three. He says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. The hus excuse me, the husbandman that laboreth must be far first partaker of the fruits. And I'll tell you this: <laughs> if you're not being part first partaker of the fruits, uh, you're not going to do much for the Lord. Yeah. Amen. You must be first partaker of the fruits. That means you need your time with the Lord. Amen. Reading and studying and having devotion with Him in His Word every day. Pray. Uh, and and uh, having your uh, relationship with God in His Word. And then when you're first partaker of the fruits, then you're going to be that husbandman that labored. You're going to say, for the love of Christ constraineth me. Because you can see the goodness of God in His Word when you study it. Amen? The Word of God is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things, and He will. Amen? Yeah. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my Gospel. Amen. <laughs> There's resurrection the God, power in the Word. You want to come alive? Get in the Word of God. Yeah. Get into it. Amen. You want to be on fire for God? Get into His Word. Amen. Amen. And you're going to see, you're going to taste how good the Lord is. Yeah. Amen. Wherein I suffer trouble, He says, as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the Word of God is not bound. Amen. Yeah. That's right. We might have troubles and trials, but I'm going to tell you what, the Word of God will lift us up out of them. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And give us a new perspective. Therefore, I endure all things. Why? Because the Word of God is not bound. Amen? Yeah. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. Amen? In other words, when we give our life to the Lord, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him, which is our reasonable service, we're going to live with Him. Amen? Yeah. He's going to fill us with His Spirit, and He's going to quicken our mortal bodies to serve Him and to do His will. Yeah. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. Amen? Yeah. There's a, I was talking about the inspirations this morning one of my favorite groups. 
another one of the songs they sing uh, is it it's been worth every mile it's been worth every mile it's been worth every trial it's been worth every valley that we've crossed it's been worth everything that we did in his dear name and it'll be worth it all when we see his face amen. why because we're going to reign with him yes. amen. amen whatever we have to go through in this life the suffering for his sake amen it'll be worth every mile that yeah. we had to walk every mile we had to tread everything that we had to suffer it's going to be worth it all when we see his face yeah. But if we deny Him, He also will deny us. And Jesus said, If you do not confess Me before men, I will not confess you before My Father, which is in heaven. I'm going to tell you what, we need to confess Him. Amen? Yeah. Everything that happens in our life, we need to confess Jesus. Because He is all in all. Amen? Yeah. He's everything. And without Him, there is nothing. Without Him, we have nothing. We can do nothing. And life means nothing. <laughs> but with Him, it means it all. Yeah. Everything, every trial, every uh, heartache that we go through, every necessity, and we read all of them, imprisonments. I mean, everything that we go through, when it's for Him, means everything. And one day, what a glorious day that's going to be yeah. when we see Him again. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we thank You tonight for Your Word. We just pray that You would help us to understand the importance of taking up our cross daily and following You. The importance of counting the cost, losing our lives for Your sake that we might find it. Lord, for we know that You have given to us life and life more abundantly. Lord, whatever trials and tribulations we go through, we know it is worth it all, Lord, because You are coming again and that one day we will reign with You forever. Lord, forgive us where we fail You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our altar is open for those who want to pray as we sing. Page 127. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. 127. <clears throat>
Amen. Page 325. Bring all five verses of trust and obey it on the last member of the Kenny Page talk.
We'll be careful to give you the honor and the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
right, we have another birthday. Jabari, you want us yes. to sing happy birthday to you? Uh -oh. Come on down. Oh, okay. Christine's nephew. How old is he? How old are you? Eleven. 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 Yeah. I forgot his name. I had to ask him again. Uh, he told me it's Jabari. And I, that ought to be easy with Jabari. New basketball player? <laughs> New basketball player. Famous his name is Jabari. So I won't forget that name. <coughs> Alright. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Again, Lord, for celebrating another birthday today, Lord. Thank you, Father, for Jabari, Lord. Thank you, Father, that uh, he chose to visit your house tonight, Lord. We pray, Father, help us to work together for the presence of your kingdom, that your name would be lifted up. We pray, Father, to give him good health and, and watch over and keep him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Page 324. Draw me nearer. 324. 